so let's start with the turning part okay keep watching that no nothing <laughs> you saw it started running hi guys you're watching channel mr electron and this what you see is a very powerful brushless dc motor that i salvaged from a xerox machine or an old photocopy machine and uh, i did a few tests and i salvaged it and restored it into a good working condition motor uh, by replacing the previous installed circuit if you want to watch that video link will be provided in the description below do check it out today in this video i'm going to use this very generator to produce large amount of electricity the best part is guys you see this head this is the gearbox the reducer gearbox because of which the rpm is only 180 it can be used in low rpm applications in case of generators okay like wind turbines or hydroelectric generators where the rpm is low but uh, you have large blades for the starting torque and then it is going to generate huge amount of electricity and the best part is that it has no brushes because of it being a brushless motor long life mounted on bearings and still very healthy so in this video i'm going to conduct a few tests on voltage current both open and short circuit and maximum power rating as well the shaft size is 10 mm and it is quite long so it is again very useful so let's get started So guys, this is a crank, the handle that I'm going to use to attach to the shaft of this motor for testing it. And the shaft size is almost 10 mm, which is quite nice. And also its length is like this, so it is not going to get in contact with the base. Yeah. Now it should be ready to go. You see? Smooth. Wow. Uh, the best part that I love about this motor is that it is so old and still it is so smooth. The bearings are so nicely made and high quality. It's really easy to turn it. Yes, it's not loaded but uh, that would not be the case for bearings okay so let's do some measurements now guys uh, you see these three wires coming out from this generator okay so these three represent the three phase i am going to connect only two wires to this multimeter that you see because it can measure only single phase voltage okay so uh, i'm going to choose these two and let's point the multimeter towards ac voltage measurement mode and this will be our single phase voltage okay so 17 volts was the maximum ac voltage that i could produce on open circuit with this generator so guys now comes the part of measuring the short circuit current of this generator but uh, the open circuit was easily measurable with the help of two wires but for short circuit current testing i will need a three phase ac to dc converter or bridge rectifier and this time i'm going to utilize all the three wires so guys it's time to connect the three phase wires these what you see this blue one and this red and this black these three are the three phase input and these two thick wires that you see red and black these two are the high current dc output so 
so finally we have converted ac to dc it's time to test it now these wires are not needed and this meter can also measure dc current which is the best part with the help of this clamp okay link will be in the description if you want to buy it pointing the meter towards 600 amps current mode so to measure the short circuit current you can see i have clamped the meter to one wire but we will also have to short circuit these two terminals the red and black and then the current is going to flow and this meter is going to read it so we are going to need another clip and here we have another clip Okay. and the wires have been short circuited okay so this time the motor is going to be really loaded so i will have to hold it strongly and then move it and still it is going to be very difficult for me to turn it and turn the shaft okay the amperes have increased to 1.48 amps it's little tight but not that much I can easily reach around 2.5 amps and it is very tight now more force is needed yeah. around a 4.8 amps I have reached yet 5.2 6 6.96 amps I think it was <sighs> yeah so 6.96 amperes was the max I could do with hand crank rotation and uh, I cannot continue doing that for long now let's move on to actual load testing uh, let's start with this car headlamp bulb uh, at its rating is uh, 100 watts you see 12 volts 100 watts let's keep the meter aside yeah got the second one too okay so both the clips have been connected you see that it has started glowing Let's turn off the lights. Okay, I'm going to start turning it now. The bulb is glowing really bright. Ah, uh, once again. Wow. Uh. But yes, it was very difficult to turn it once it was loaded. Although guys, it is going to be much easier to blow this 35 watts bulb. Now guys, the connected bulb is only 35 watts. So this time, this time it should be easy, not 100 watts. Let's see. Yeah, it is really easy. Oh, wow <laughs> very easy well, I can easily glow it to full potential without even standing you see let's turn off the lights and see this time okay simple turning and it starts no power at all when compared to the previous bulb the previous bulb was around three times more powerful than this one Yeah, I can even fuse it. You see simple turning and it is glowing. <laughs> wow. So guys, uh, when I was uh, there outside searching for other stuff that I, I can glow with this generator, it just struck my mind that this generator produces three-phase AC. 
so what if i utilize just one single phase ac and step it up with the help of a 12 volts to 220 volts transformer like a ups transformer and uh, then power up 220 volts ac loads directly without any battery or any other conversion circuit that would be interesting right so it seems like that i found one ups transformer 12 to 220 volts so let's connect it as you can see that uh, like this wire and this wire these two are really thick and these two are uh, like red and green very thin so obviously these are high voltage low current and these two are low voltage high current so connecting any of the two wires from this generator let's remove this one and i'm going to choose these two and connect them to the low voltage side of the transformer so guys here what i have is a big 18 watts led bulb so i'm going to start with this one and then move on to the next higher load if i have it with that being done uh, let's start the turning part oh <laughs> You saw such a simple turn and it started glowing. I didn't even think about that. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, as soon as it starts glowing, this generator is getting loaded. But once it turns off again, uh, like uh, the load becomes very less. Oh, so let's give it a fast spin to see if it can glow continuously. Okay. Oh, yeah, it is a little tight now. 20 watts bulb. <sighs> yes, but it is working continuous output. Let's turn off the lights once again. It is turning out to be an interesting experiment. So guys, the lights are completely out. I cannot see anything. Well, I'm going to grab the handle. Yeah, got it. And uh, that's the motor. And that's the gear okay yeah i think i've got it let's turn oh <laughs> wow <laughs> isn't it so amazing oh, it's very bright and it's not that hard i'm sitting over here and then i'm rotating it and still it is glowing pretty bright but as soon as i like reduce the rpm it stops glowing i have to keep it steady okay yeah yeah, but it works really well. <laughs> Seriously, guys, that was an interesting experiment. Oops, lights are gone once again. Let's let me turn on. Hey guys, look what I found. An induction motor fan. Well, I'm not sure if uh, the single phase output of this generator is going to be enough to start it, but there's no harm in giving it a try. Let's see if it can spin it. So let's start with the turning part. Okay, keep watching that. No, nothing. <laughs> you saw it started running. <laughs> Once again. <laughs> oh, it is running very slowly, but yes, it is running. Let's move in fast. <laughs> Uh, yeah this generator was able to start this one but uh, yeah obviously the output power of this generator is might not be enough because i'm only utilizing one phase out of three okay so one phase and after that transformer losses and then again the worst induction motor losses did you know guys that in an induction motor 40 percent of the received power is lost as heat and the remaining 60% is the only power that is driving the fan or uh, the load okay so that is why i like seriously don't like the squirrel cage induction motors there are a lot of losses and uh, the, the torque is also not that good when compared to the slip rings in any case even if it is a slip ring induction motor still it is going to have a uh, better torque than this one 
Hey, look what I found. You wanted watch, Ferox LED panel. Yeah. Uh, the transformer. The transformer output has been connected. You see here. Okay. Uh, to this LED panel. Let's start it and see if it can glow this. <laughs> it is glowing. It's dim, but it is glowing. And now it is very bright. Let's turn off the lights once again. Oh, again. And here we have. You see, when I uh, turn it very lightly, then it is glowing. Not that bright. Okay. But let's turn it faster. You see, it is much brighter. Very, very bright. Light. Uh, medium okay and bright <laughs> and it is very easy you see I'm sitting over here and turning it and it is glowing free bright Fire. Wow. so anyways guys that was all about uh, the video and this experiment now let's move on to the contest okay so guys your hidden question for today is what was the thickness of the shaft of the motor that I used in my previous video. From today onwards you will only have to answer correct questions for two consecutive videos and be the first one to do it and then you will be the winner instead of the three which was the previous scenario. Now it is going to be only two videos. Give the correct answer for the two videos and be the first one to do it and you will be the winner.